I'm at Super Judge and I'm so glad. Praise God. Now, now it, it's beautiful when we start sharing things like this. Why? Because we're getting into the truth about the kingdom of heaven. Now, I, I know you may not find this common, these things I'm sharing with you, you may not find it common. But that's why you don't really have a lot of people living the life. See that now? Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Now it's the same thing. Why are, we, why are you calling for that? Day? The kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. As long... As long as you do these things that the Lord... Now, now the Lord said to me on every broadcast, you will lead my children to make this demand. Okay, now what's that? That is a secret of the kingdom of heaven he has given me where this broadcast is concerned. So if you're listening to me and every day you make this declaration as we make it, I tell you the truth, soon you're going to realize that you don't get broke anymore. You, you, you can't explain it. You, you just get to that point where you're like, I don't get broke anymore. Now you are, you are, you will get to that point because you are obeying what I told you he said. Remember he says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe also in his prophets and you shall prosper. Now you believe God. So because you believe God, you know that it is important to listen to what I'm saying to you. Now, beyond the teachings, that, oh, I understand. Oh, wow, that's good. Oh, that's new. Oh, wow. Okay, praise God. Now, also, when I tell you that this is what God said we should do, oh, I, I believe what he's saying is from the Lord. I believe God said that to him and I'm going to obey. Now, when you believe and, for example, say God said we should call for our daily bread. All right. All right. So you join to call for your daily bread. What are you doing? You believe also in his prophet. And what's going to happen to you? You're going to prosper. That's how it works. But if you go, eh, must, must I call for daily bread? Must I? Must, must we make this demand every day? Doesn't it look like we are begging God? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not your attitude. That shouldn't be your attitude. Praise God. Because you, you, you are going to miss out on what we're talking about. Why? Because you didn't believe the prophets. So does that mean anything any prophet tells me? Hey, know the prophet that God has sent to you. See that now? Now, God most likely is not going to warn you concerning a serious matter that has to do with your life and destiny with an unknown prophet. No, he won't. Does God warn with an unknown prophet? I mean, unknown to you. Yes, he does. Now, that has to do with when it has to do with immediate or present danger. So you, you might be going in the wrong direction and, and someone will just call you and say, hey, I don't know you, but where you're going to, don't go there. And then the moment that word comes, you begin to receive a clear witness in your spirit that well, I don't know that person, but I think I should listen. Because he's warning me, don't go there. Hey, we've got into the teachings already. <laughs> can, we, can we just call for a day? I don't need to explain too much concerning this. Praise God. Because I have a lot I've got to share with you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. You've just so blessed us with your word. Please, praise God. Hey, let's, let's make that demand right away. Say with me, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You know, sometimes we have to stay on track because the wisdom of God, and, and that's the thing, the knowledge of God is so vast that I can start here and before I know what's happening, I've ended in some end that I didn't even imagine. See? Now, that's why the Bible said the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So, I know where, where we're going for today. I know. Not just I know. I know what the spirit of God. But then also, 
You see, as you flow with the Spirit of God, you see a lot. So then you now choose. What do you want to do? Will you get distracted or will you stay focused? I choose to stay focused today. Praise God. I was talking to you about something very important yesterday. You remember talking about asking God for a car? And I said, hey, first and foremost, He begins to bring wisdom to you. How does that wisdom come? I'll tell you. I'm trying to be practical using personal examples and even from scriptures. Now then, you, you, you've asked God for the car. You remember when you asked God for the car? You did. You remember. Because you've got to remember. If it means anything to you, then you will know that from this day on, I've asked God for a car and I'm expecting him to answer me. And so anytime it crosses your mind, you know, you go, so maybe someone goes, oh, so so person just got a new car. Whoa, praise God. You know, like, oh, wow. Hallelujah. Glory. <sighs> Lord, I've asked you for a car. I know it's come. Yeah. You don't get angry because another person has gotten theirs and you didn't get. Even though you know this person, I know this person used to steal money from the office. I know this, I know what this person does. Don't get angry. When you say, oh, this person just bought a new car. Oh, wow, praise God for him. Oh, seriously. I, I mean it from your heart. Praise God for him. Now that is an opportunity for you to remember that you have asked God for the car. Now, when you remember, what do you do? Oh, I know, I know what I'm waiting for. Patience is at work in me. Patience is at work in me. Now, an opportunity may come and then you get some money and then, wow, that's your car. But then you remember, I've asked God for a car. Father, I know I've asked you for a car. Would you at this time want me to use my money to buy the car? See that now? Now, if you don't receive an answer from the Lord, relax, wait. Say, how long will I wait? It's not how long you will wait. It's how well you'll wait. And that's what patience is. Patience is not just waiting. Patience is what you are doing in the waiting. That's what patience is. Take that activity during the waiting out. There is no patience in you. You are only wasting time. Put those activities, then you have patience in that time. So it's not all waiting that is patience. Get that right. So, so I ask the Lord, should I go ahead? Sometimes you may even have the money. But what are you looking for? You are looking for the one that came from God. Now, if you have the money and then you're praying and God says, you see, There is a way you will know that a city's car, it's not a normal car. Let's say you have the money and then you're waiting on God to give you a car because you've asked him. And then one day, the word of the Lord comes to you. Go and see so and so person. And then you go. And then, while you're dead, person, oh, hey, so, so and so person just brought this car. Or so, so and so person has a car shop. And I'm going there like, oh wow, okay. So why did God search come and see? And I'm I'm here. He said he's going to a car shop. Oh, let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. And then you get to the car shop and you're looking around. And, and you're gonna notice something in your heart. There's just gonna be an a a dawning that you're in the right place. See that now? So you're there and you're looking around and then suddenly you see the car that your spirit agrees with. You'll find it. Now, you are still walking in patience because now all these activities, you remember what I said? That's patience at work. And then you walk there, you, 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 you just, okay, so let's go. You get to the car stand and then you're just looking around and then looking around and then suddenly you see a car and then there is just an agreement in your spirit. 
Okay. Hey, what is it about this car? Lord, I'm looking at this car and I can't take my eyes off it. What would you have me do? Patience is still at work. And then you hear the voice of God say, bite. I should bite. Okay. Now, now, sometimes you may even, even have kept that money for something else. But then you hear, bite. I should buy it. Hey, how much is this car? Oh, it's 4 million. It's 5 million. 10 million. Hmm. No, no. But, but you have the money. No, so I, I carry all that money. But Lord, and then you hear, buy it. I, all that money to buy. You, you see, Soon, it will be like a song in your heart. Buy it, buy it. You, everywhere you turn, you, you just keep, know, you will know I have seen my car. You will know. And then, oh, no, no, let me go home and think about it. And then eventually, your friend that took you there says, so, so, no, I didn't see what I was looking for. Let's go. And then you go all the way home. Your mind will not go off that car. And then you get home, oh, what, what do I do? And then it's okay, let me pray about it. Lord, you, as you kneel down, you just see yourself buying that car. That's all you can see. Now that's how you know this is God. You're not being manipulated by, by any devil. Okay, Lord, I submit to your will and to your counsel. I'm going to buy the car. And then you take that now, because you had the money, you take that money and then you go, and you pay it, and you get the car. Now, you may not understand the part of taking all that money, but you just know you're doing the right thing. Now, guess what? You're not just buying a car. You are, by faith, getting... <laughs> I pray, I pray you understand this thing. You're not just buying one car. You are buying all the cars you will need for eternity. That's what you paid for. And guess what? You actually did not pay for that car. You sowed a seed. <laughs> now you'll be wondering, what are you talking about? The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. I'm just telling you how heaven functions. Praise God. Ah. So you, you think you, you paid the guy when you took the car home. So he said, I bought a car. No, you didn't buy a car. You sowed a seed. <laughs> In church? No. The car owner. Hey, but I gave it to the car owner. Yes, it's a seed. Why is it a seed? I'll tell you. Because you... Let that money go by the command of the Lord. So God actually asked you for that money and you obeyed him by giving it to that person. He said, boy, I took the car, so I took my... That's not your harvest. <laughs> you know, the, the way some of us live, you can't explain, you can't explain our life, but this is the secret that holds us. This is the secret we operate by. So you didn't pay for a car. You sowed a seed into that fellow's life. And but I took the car home. Yes, wait until the harvest begins to come. <laughs> so you take that car and you begin to drive that car. Woo, glory. Now, one of the things you're going to notice quickly, and this will not take long, first is that money you spent for that car will be restored to you. God is going to open a door and you will receive that kind of money or more. So you just know that that thing that you kept that money for, if you did keep that money for something else, have been restored. You will see that happen. That's when you know that God just borrowed money from you. And 
And then you see that obedience that you just displayed. I told you something. You have. That's why it's a seed. Because if you, if you are thinking you just paid 5 million naira for one car. No. You sowed a seed of 5 million naira into where God commanded you to sow it to. That car dealer. And you took that car. But guess what you have just done? You have paid for every car that everyone in your lineage is going to drive. I said this for eternity. See, that may be your first car or that may be your next car. But you will notice from that day henceforth, when it comes to issues of cars, you don't bother. You see, if you give out this car tomorrow, in no time, another car will come. If the car is even stolen from you, which shouldn't happen, but if, event if actually it does happen, you will notice that it's not a problem. Another car will come. You will just see to it that the issues about car becomes nothing in your life again. And my time is up. Praise <laughs> God. I, I pray, I pray. Hear me, hear me. You need, if you need to fast and pray to understand what I'm telling you, do it. Because it's vital in your life. I pray the Lord will give you understanding today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.